Funny, I had these two questions. I was meaning to use this first one uh, apropos of the previous, previous um, uh, uh, thing about, um, you know, your ideals, setting standards, values, et cetera, et cetera, from the examples of the masters in the last video. But um, this one here uh, could be uh, sort of a pendant piece or a set. Uh, it could go well with the other one. And because Elizabeth uh, asked this, and then Sean comes in and asks a very related question. So, so Elizabeth says, I'm sort of tired of artists copying Sergeant Soroya, Zorn, and others as though you can't paint with expression, style, and passion for your own subject that's in your own, that is your own, or even that of different artists. Uh, granted, we all mostly start out learning from or even copying famous artists and teachers. It's almost tribal, like wearing the same clothes. You have to say, you, ha you have to say you do plain air painting, not usually I paint outside or on location or outdoors. You have to show a certain popular easel, a particular brand of paints, brushes, and frame your work in dark plain air frames. After a while, to me, many of the plain the paintings begin to look alike or, or identifiably like their teacher's work. What, what do people care about? What do they love so much? And she's talking about painters here. That they have to capture it in spirit and truth in paint, like many musicians, writers in their own way. Yeah, so I, that last point is really what we're talking about. Um, uh, let, me, let me look at the previous point, but what, the, what, what do people care about? What do they love so much that they have to find a way, their own way to say it? You know, you have to find your own way, don't you? Is the point is the point I'm going to be addressing today? This this whole idea of sorting out your own your own fingerprints, if you want to call it that. And um, but um, you know, in a time of uh, in a time when their teachers are few and you know, good knowledge is hard to come by. It isn't surprising we have pictures to look at, and it isn't surprising that people just go start borrowing stuff. But there's a big temptation to become somebody else because you're not clear on what your motive is. And your motive is supposed to be, as a student, to become master of nature in front of you. And what confuses you, as much what we talked about last week, is that the masters that have preceded you give examples of things, of how to see better, of what nature is doing, and how to approach her to get more truth. But truth is this wonderful uh, you know, unifier, but isolator. What it does is it makes you your own person. And so in your search for truth, that is the truth of what you see, which is, in my view, the beginning point of all painters, all young painters should be simply trying to become master of that. You will find your own fingerprints and you will, yeah, admittedly, find it through the vehicle to some degree of somebody else's methods. But one reason to, to, scout, to scout widely for, for a, a way of working so that you won't become a single, you know, the best way of working isn't Soroya, the best way of working isn't Sargent, or the best look isn't any of these people. It isn't any of us. It's, the, not, it's not to camp. It's not, there, that, 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 what the, the best way is, the way that you can manage with your own hands and your own, through your own eyes, right? Uh, uh, you know, as you, as you bring forth what you see with your own eyes. So I'm with you on that idea that we got to all stop being like each other and got to stop being, you know, uh, there's this club thing that we do. You have a reason that's very personal for being in painting and you need to stick with it, but you also need to have skills. And that was my point was last week. So let's, let's, so that's just the beginning. What do people care about? What do they love so much that they have to capture it uh, in their own way? What, so I think the phrasing you might like to have put a little differently, but I think we're on to your point. Uh, but the next question is uh, like unto it. And Sean just sent this today, not knowing that I've done this video for, well, what you have, would have seen last week, which is now four weeks from when I do this. Uh, how much, if at all, can, a, can or should a student use the work of masterful painters like DeCamp or Benson as a precedent for their own work? On the one hand, students are introduced to the potential that can be achieved with paint and naturally adopt their favorite painters as role models in various ways. On the other hand, it's nature that sets the ultimate precedent of beauty and the student's relationship with beauty, how they experience it and interpret it with paint that has the most powerful role in the look of their work. And so Sean is largely answering your question here, uh, Elizabeth. Should students of painting allow themselves to uh, want their paintings to look like a Benson or a DeCamp, et cetera? Is that way of thinking useful at all? Yeah, and I actually have spent my 
uh, sort of spent my youth uh, wanting to not look like anybody. In other words, I, that's one of those things where I say don't look left or right. You don't want to borrow somebody else's look, but, they're, but, but masters do have knowledge, and you need to work with somebody who will give you information. I've worked with Brack, Brackman, but I don't look like Brackman at all. And, um, and by the way, there is an inevitable thing when students are just recently past their masters. Or if you look at the great painters from the past, they will be, they will be out of the ateliers of their masters, literally in workshops, in which they're having to paint exactly like their masters. Raphael out of the studio of Perugino, as an example. And, and he has to do that look, and eventually he, he finds his own voice. He, and he, where does he find it? He finds it in the truth of nature. But he learned a bunch of things about how to handle paint and how to make form turn and all those kinds of things. And he found best practices. I'm suggesting you can wander through a lot of good paintings and find best practices, as I suggested last week. So review that one before you go any further. But I would actually simply warn you against trying to be somebody you're not. Just simply take information about their approach, the, the, you know, their craft. You're going to get that. You're going to find that all over the place. You can learn something from anybody, said Degas, right? repeating from last week. So let me jump over to some pictures, sort of obvious. So do you, so you're painting a, a thing outdoors uh, or you're painting a, a, a female subject indoors. Um, and uh, in both cases, these guys are using broken color. But do you, you see clearly the, that these guys, while they are working in a way that's similar, there's a certain element of lost and found, a certain, uh, there's a certain approach in terms of visual order that's very much theirs. It's a thing they've accomplished, that I say, of a keen, uh, it's their extension of, of truth. They've found ways of accessing the truth more strongly, for example, than in their mind probably uh, uh, Monet had done. At least they picked up, they, they, so, they, so it, most of what we do is some sort of a um, combination, new combinations, right? But all of it from nature, Ma nature's the master, right? As a student, your job is to copy nature exactly, as it were, the way you see it. And then in a sense, when you get to a guy like um, uh, 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 Ang, who's, you know, he's getting irritated when somebody says, I like the way you idealize that. And he said, I didn't idealize anything. I painted exactly what I saw. Uh, that shows that that mindset is still there, that he's painting what he has in front of him. But, but what he's drawing forth is unique to himself, number one, because because of what he's found in nature, that he's giving voice to. What he's found is, is only his own soul, is out of his own soul. And the long studies he's done of, of methodologies and techniques and stuff, whatever it is, has given him a set of tools that winds up being his uniquely, uniquely his own. So uh, I'm hoping you can follow that idea, but but so here are two guys, Benson or DeCamp. My answer to you is what you would already know, and that is you shouldn't be imitating these guys. You, you should be copying nature, and you should be noticing, though, that when things aren't looking good, what are these guys doing? I mean, I, have kind of, I can't pretend that I was looking for best practices when I began to, to uh, paint like the Boston School painters. I was actually copying their starts to see what in the heck they did for a second. I had no model of a good start other than the, the crude hacking of, uh, uh, you know, very lightly and then spot, spot, spot color of, of Brackman or the outline drawing modeling of, of Gamble. And it, they weren't, neither one of them was precisely what made sense to me in terms of making the look of nature, you know, do what I saw it doing. And that's in, with all humility doing what I saw it doing. So, uh, so I was looking at other starts, and I was, that's when I looked at these guys, and I said, what are these guys doing? Because they were getting so much of the kind of content that, I, that resonated with me about true in nature. So, you know, as long as, you're, as, long as it's about your voice and, and, and the truth to nature, you know, why don't you, why aren't we like scientists? We're, we're standing on the heels of giants, on the shoulders of giants. <laughs> uh, so... <laughs> So here's uh, Soroya and Sargent, who, you know, why would you want to ha speak in either one of these guys' voice? Sargent's voice is Sargent's voice. You can't pretend to be another painter. It just doesn't work. You can copy other people's methods and then paint in the manner of, in the manner of, in the manner of. But over time, you look, over, look at Sargent and look at somebody in the manner of. 
And it's kind of embarrassing because you're so much weaker. You're never going to look good because you don't like authenticity. You're never going to look good painting in the manner of. But, you know, it's a funny story about Corot, whose pictures I'm not showing that they said. <laughs> I forget how it was said that um, about how many Corots there were that Corot hadn't even painted. Uh, there's a really wonderful uh, witticism about it, which I can't remember. But, um, but people just picked up his mannerisms. They painted his color values, value schemes. They'd make his marks the way he made the marks. I mean, like it was like getting, it was very, very embarrassing. And people do this kind of stuff for money. It's a sad thing because that's one of the reasons you, you have to want to you know, hang on to the idea of the starving artist because you want to stay true to your form and trust in your creator for your, for your, for your living, not in, not in somebody else's success in the past. And, it'll, and that'll fade anyway. You can always imitate somebody and get some meager droppings from their table, but who wants that, right? Better to be your own self. Yeah. What was that? What was that line? Better to be a servant in the house of God than a uh, whatever. You know, but you, you understand the you understand the concept. So I'm just going to show you four Adonis and Venus and Adonises, and you'll see the voices the, 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 of these different painters. They all have their own voice. One of the things they've already they've gotten equal, similarly is they've gotten the idea of painting with breadth. They're not painting with lots of not with very fine realist noodling. So you could argue that that's a common thread. But the top one is Titian, and you can see the date. And nine, 40 years later, here's Veronese doing the same subject as Venus and Adonis. And if you look closely at any part of this thing, you won't find the same treatment. You won't find, this, find the same voice. There's some similarities. Uh, no question there are some similarities. Um, uh, I think the uh, figure creation that uh, Veronese is doing at this point is... Uh, is awfully similar stylistically to what um, Titian is doing. But is he trying to be a little Titian? That's a question. That's, and that's, that's your concern. But, but the fact is you can't even compose the way the other guy did. First of all, you wouldn't want to. And why is the composition any different? You know, well, if you wouldn't want to compose like somebody else did, you know, you're going to go around and imitate everything somebody did. So, it, you know, since you're not going to do that, you're, you're already, you're, but, and, but you can't see like another person. The color of Titian is never going to be the color of Veronese and vice, you know, and vice versa. So, uh, and they don't make an effort to do it, to become the little, little versions of the other that I can see in the long work of uh, Veronese. It's much like the work of, um, of uh, Van Dyck compared to Rubens. He's very much in that, in that school of Rubens, but you see that all of a sudden he's coming out of it, much like I said about Raphael out of Perugino. He's coming out of it by being truer to nature. And the, the heavy stylization, the, what you might call the baroqueness of the, of the uh, Rubens uh, uh, figure work and everything, the interpretation is so stylized. Um, and then here down here is another version, this is another Venus and Adonis, and you see there's nothing to do with the other two guys, the ways the paint's put down, nothing about it, it's entirely his own fingerprints. It's only, you know, what uh, did I say that last one was? So it's only like 25 years later that he did his version I mean, the tiring themes were probably being suggested, but who knows? I mean, like the people paint the Boston Commons, for example, the the swan boats. People paint those things over and over because, as some one of the guys who did it said, they sell <laughs> souvenir paintings. So you never know, uh, and uh, it it every every subject is an opportunity for a painter to 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 do his stuff, his unique stuff. But that is one of those things that can be in that same category. Is there a subject that we must pick? You know, it's the fad, it's the rage, it's the thing. Uh, Elizabeth, I know what you're thinking there. But here's Poussin, same subject, and not even slightly the same composition. He's really in a different class. And Poussin is a guy that many, many French painters uh, uh, then began to use as a model and to be, began to be a uh, sort of a teacher for them. Uh, I don't mean a model of a look, but the, he began to be rather a teacher for them in terms of how to think about design. Uh, the um, but as anyway, you can look at all these and you can see that the, each person has his own voice. You, one of the ways you know this is that you recognize these people from a mile away. But what is the common thread as you get into our generation? The common thread, at least by the way, and I shouldn't say our generation, but when you're painting impressionistically, the common thread is nature itself. That's always the common thread, of course, right? These guys are all trying to give you something more of the look of nature, but these are all imaginative paintings. And they're all voicing, they're all creating the entire universe of theirs. So 
they're not doing the same thing as, as what we're doing when we get to the, uh, uh, the Impressionist mindset. Or we are here are, uh, what am I saying? We, we're, we're individualizing the expression of the beauty that we're responding to. But we are all taking, a, as it were, a slice of nature and, and moving from there, right? And in this case here, it's much easier to show that you can't be another painter. You can't do it. <laughs> uh, there are some similarities, you know, more striking similarities between Benson and uh, Tarbell. But, and, and of course, they're not trying to be each other. They had seen Soroya, uh, this one down below is Soroya, they'd seen Soroya. And he, they said, well, oh, well, we're going to paint with thicker paint from this point forward. You know, they sort of decided between them. I think it's with Soroya they'd seen. And, um, and so there was that influence. But did they want to make little Soroyas? I don't think so. Uh, Monet was a big influence. Did they want to become Monets? No, but they borrowed the lessons. And they kept their nose to the, to the, to the grindstone of truth to nature and deriving their impressionists, their, their impressions, uh, their, their, their expressions from the visual impression in front of them. But, but their, it was their own personal response. It's their own personal fingerprints and ways of using paint. And, uh, and yes, they're accommodating some of the ideas of multiple, multiple levels of teachers. When you see the decamp here, you're seeing, you're seeing, you're seeing you know, 500 years of knowledge. You know, this is coming down into one guy right up to the present day. But that's a normative thing, right? That's, that's like science becoming, you know, using the, the generations before it. So, yeah. So my answer, my, my simplistic answer for you uh, um, both is be true to, be true to yourself, but take the lessons of the masters, do what you can to help them improve your understanding of how nature's working or, or, your, or your ability to move paint in a way that's more effective to express the truth of what you see in front of you. And, um, and, and, but, but yeah, just your own fingerprints, your own marks, respect that. Respect that. We want that. We want everybody speaking in his own voice. We want new songs all over the earth. We want, we, we want a new song to the Lord every day, every time we hear one. All right. All right. Great, guys. Um, I better stop at that and make it too long for my, uh, for my rushed uh, um, producer who's off to see the world in just another day or so. And um, big things going on. I, he, I, he hasn't mentioned anything about whether I should mention where he's going. So I want to thank you all for your donations, your, your, um, your uh, subscriptions, likes, shares, everything. Much appreciated. And uh, keep the comments coming. I'm looking forward to all your responses to these several emails. And uh, I won't be able to do any responses fresh until about a month from now. So um, I'm sorry. This is actually just a week away. <laughs> oh, I don't know why I'm even saying that then. So, yeah. But right now, you won't be, have seen any of my responses uh, from the last three weeks. Sometimes I build on one the very next day, and that isn't going to be happening for a little while here. All right, do, um, do well in the next week, and um, finish off the rest of your summer well. Um, enjoy your painting. See you next time.